Good morning. Say out loud with your own voice, I am who you say I am. Believe it. You are his. He is yours. If you have your Bibles, turn to Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. Second Chronicles 16, and verse 9. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Whose hearts are complete in him. Whose hearts are sold out to him. That he's going to and fro. Showing himself strong to those. I want to be as Paul. Not just a servant, but I want to be a bond servant. Doing all that Jesus wants me to do with no question. Knowing him in such a deep way that. My life translates into other people's lives change because him living in me. And I don't want to be this person that says, in this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that person that's constantly battling, having these wars. I want to know who I am. I want you all to know who you are in Christ. Today we're going to talk about growing. What that looks like. What that looked like for Jesus to grow. Since we've come into the building, we've talked about different things. We've talked about staying on course. With what God has for us. Focusing on family. Uniting together. Being a family together. We've talked about our authority. What our authority means. And how much authority we have. And how little the enemy has. We talked about the ifs. Hope you read some of them. If you do this. God will do this. If you hear this. Last week, Carlene on Mother's Day spoke a beautiful message on honor and its rewards. Thank you, Carlene, for stepping in. It was a great job. You did a great job. God just wants to raise up powerful people. You're all powerful. I was asking the Lord about all these things. I was saying, Lord, how do you want me to tie all this stuff in? I mean, you're, you started out here at this new building. How do you want to tie all these messages in? And what, what are you saying to us? And his response was, I want my people to grow. I want them to grow in the things that I've called them to. Grow in their identity. I want them to grow up. To grow strong. To be victorious. But there's coming a day that we're going to need to be strong soldiers. We're living in some times that we're going to need to stand up and rise up and be bold. And I want you guys to learn how to judge where you are in Christ by the responses that you have towards others. The responses that you have in in different situations. And I know that I can look back at my life and I see see the different responses from 
how I responded to a situation then and how I respond to that same situation now. It's night and day difference. Night and day difference. And how some of you respond, some of you ladies, how you respond to your men is different when your mind is set different. When your mindset is different, your response can be different. And if you will look at your life, engage your life just on your responses alone, that will help you in your growth spurt. Yesterday, Shelly and I flew back in from another country and we had to go through customs. And Carly, you talked about honor. We're living in a country that's lacking honor. Big time. Lacking honor. So the scenario was we're getting off this airplane and we had one hour to get through customs, get our bags, recheck our bags back in, get back in another line to wait to get through security check after customs to get to our gate. We were at this in the airport. They took us clear in Dulles, Washington, Dulles, Washington, clear to the other end of the airport for our security check. Then we had to go back clear to this end. I don't know why they booked a flight like this or why it would be booked like that, but we were, we were in a hurry. And they said on the plane, they said, there's going to be some people connecting to another flight. If you are connecting to another flight, raise your hand. So a few of us raised our hands. They said, all right, stay in your seats until they can get off and get through to the, so they can get through the security checks and make their next flight. We're at the back of the plane. Shelly bargain shops like I do everything. She bargain shops for air, airlines. So we sit to the back of the plane. Um, and, and you watch people and they're, and they're starting to get off like normal. They're just getting their bags one at a time. They're going, and we're like, uh, what happened to that? Stay seated until we get past you so we can get through the security line. <clears throat> so here we are. We're running through the line, and we're going through this line, and uh, we're, in the back, we're at the back of the plane, and we're like, oh, come on, come on, come on. Finally, everyone's off, and here we are. We're walking out. It was like the, almost like the last one's off. There are a few people behind us. I'm like... Where's the honor? I was thinking of your message. Where is the honor in that? I mean, there's going to be fruit in honor. But where's people's honor at? So we literally had to run through. There's this line. I mean, they're in and out like a, I mean, this line. And they're like, we're never going to get through this. Here comes this guy that speaks no English, it seemed like, telling us what we need to do to be able to get to the front of the line. He was trying to tell us to go download this app in the middle of a dungeon that has no service. Download this app so you can get this app on your phone and you can scan this barcode and get to the front of the line. So here we are, Shelly, and Shelly's like, she's forceful. She, she's like, pushes past people, come on, let's start, we're going. So we're trying to scan this thing and we have no service. Like, it won't scan, it won't scan. We call Faye. We had servers call Faye because she's our tech lady. We always call Faye, and they, all else fails, call Faye. And um, so we're like, we can't do this. What do we do? So finally, we got the app downloaded, and we got to the custom guy right there, and, and he said, you need this barcode. We're like, we don't have a barcode. He goes, we'll get out of line until you get a barcode. So we had to get out of line until we got a barcode. Finally, we got the barcode, got in, ran to our next gate, made our flight. The grace of God, we made our flight. But... But the honor, we're not growing in honor as a society. We're lacking those things. But if we have these things, Jesus said if we learn these things, if we learn to stay on course, to focus on family, this family, our inner family and this family, know your authority, learn the ifs, practice them, do them, and start honoring one another. And we can see how we can grow in all of these things. You remember Peter's response? We can look at different characters in the Bible and see how they responded to different things and how they grew from those things that they responded to. Peter's response to Jesus when he was walking by to the three people that ask him, are you one of those? And he's like, no, no, no. Matter of fact, he said a cuss word, no. 
to make emphasis on the no. But it was because he had fear. He operated out of fear. Sometimes we operate out of fear. We operate out of our wrong motives, our wrong thoughts, our wrong patterns of living to get the answer that we're giving. But watch Peter's life. It went from that, Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus rising up, walking around, and he had breakfast with him one morning. Peter noticed that Jesus was on the shore. This is before Jesus ascended into heaven. He noticed him walking or on the shore, and Jesus had this little fire built. He's going to have breakfast with all of them. Peter dives in, puts his clothes on. You have to study how they fished back then. Sometimes they fished with certain garments on, different things, there's ways they fished back in. But he put his garments back on, jumped in the water, went to the shore, and Jesus asked him the three questions. And to the three questions, he said, yes, yes, yes. He grew. From, the, from that moment that, that he said no, and to Jesus going to the grave, to Jesus coming back alive, Peter grew. From the no, no, no to the yes, yes, yes. God showed him something. He had an encounter with Jesus. And you can grow the same way. You have to grow the same way. Peter grew so much to when Peter was in prison. Listen, he was in prison and he was sound asleep when the angel come to break him out of prison. That the angel had to strike him in the side just to wake him up. That's how sound he was in God. In who he was. In whose he was. We can all be that way. We can be that sound that we can be in prison, sound asleep, and nothing's going to bother us. Because we don't even have a care in the world. It doesn't matter. If we're in the center of his will, none of that matters. What you go through does not matter when you're in the center of God's will. He's going to bring, when you're in the center of his will, all that circumference has to come into play. It has to. So we watch Peter grow. I don't know if you know this or not, but while Shelly and I were gone, on the 17th, we had our number 11 grandson. (laughs) Number 11. Wow. His name is Lennon Carter Abney. We haven't got to see him yet. We will today, I hope. But do you know that if if Lennon Carter Abney shows no signs of growth, there's going to be a warning sign and they're going to take him back to the hospital. They're going to say, why is he not growing? And they're going to try to figure out why this baby is not growing. And they're going to fix that problem so this baby can grow. We have things in our life. We need to figure out why we're not growing. Why are you in a stagnant state? Why are you still drinking from the bottle and not able to eat meat when you've been in this walk for how many years? We have to get past the thumb-sucking stage sooner or later. I know it feels good to suck the thumb. I know it's great and it's comforting and all that. But we have to get past that in our growth, in our walk with Christ, to be able to reach a lost and dying world. Babies can't reach a lost and dying world. Grown-up babies can. Listen. Do you ever look at Jesus as a, as a baby? I mean, do you ever really thought about that? You know, we see Jesus as a man, but you, if you think of him as a baby, Jesus actually had to be held like this little baby over here. He had to be nurtured. He couldn't do that. He had to, ha- he had to be nurtured. He had to be fed. He had to learn just like we learn. He had to learn how to walk. He didn't just miraculously Jesus because he's Jesus. Walk. Oh, wow, look at the little month-old baby just walking around. No. It don't work that way. Jesus was man. He was fully man. 
So he had to do the same things. And what he tries to show us in this is that if he can grow, then you can grow. And if he can grow and come to the stature that he was and the status with men that he had, you can have the same thing. I look at my life and Shelly's life, where I was 20 years ago and where I am today. And some people might covet. You know, people cannot be excited for someone to get something. We had two pastors. I mean, we couldn't afford to go on vacation, but we had two pastors, not from this region, say, here, take this money and get out of Dodge. So we're like, all right, cool, we'll do it. But some people look at that and they're like, oh, look at the pastors. Man, they get this, this, and this. They get to do this. We get to do what we did because we have stature with men and with God. Because of the life that we live. Because of the growth that we have. Do those things. Follow Jesus. Follow what Shelly and I are doing. We don't get it right all the time, but we correct it when we can. When the Lord shows us, we will fix it, we will correct it. Don't ever be envious of what others get. Be joyous of what others get. Never be envious of it. Rejoice, because in your rejoicing for them, you will have the same things. Believe me, it's true. Shelly and I, every time we hear of someone getting a check, we're like, yes, hallelujah, thank you, God, for blessing them. We don't say, well, why didn't I get a check? Well, why don't I get to do this? That shows a lack of growth. He just wants you to grow up. Let's grow up. He had to learn how to walk. He had to learn how to talk. He had to learn how to work. We need to teach that back into this culture. He had to learn how to read. I mean, we're just talking about a man. He had to learn how to get along with people. You think just because he was Jesus and it was God that he just got along? He had to learn these things. And how did he learn? By people around him teaching him these things. By the walk that they had, he learned from their walk. They were walking with God. They were walking for God, just like you should be. When you walk for God and with God, people are going to see you and they're going to follow after your footsteps. They're going to, they walk with God. Man, I want to be like Theo. Want to, so bad. But they're going to walk like you walk until they meet the Father and get to walk like He walks. That's how it works. They're going to follow your walk. So when you're envious and you're covetous and you're all these things, they're going to they're gonna notice that. They're, they're going to either bo- go on board with that or they're going to say, no, that's not of heaven. And you might see some Christians that you've been in the ministry for 30 years and they've been in the ministry for, for one year and they surpass you. Why? Because their heart position is their perfect at heart. I'll read some scripture here. It says in Luke 2.52, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That means that he grew. When you increase in something, you grow in something. Jesus, our Savior who lives inside of us, who died for us, grew into the man of God that he was. He grew. It says right here that Jesus increased in wisdom. He didn't just have it. He increased in wisdom. He increased in knowledge. He increased in favor with God and with man. What is wisdom? Wisdom is to be able to correctly use information that you receive. Understand your choices. And make good choices. That is what wisdom is. So I seek wisdom. I seek wisdom every day. I want wisdom. I want to be able to make the right choices with the right information that I have. And make good decisions every day. All day long. Even in the littlest, tiniest, littlest things. I want to make good decisions. 
Because God can trust you with those little things that you make a decision with, and he gives you the bigger things to make decisions with. I'm telling you, listen, I was a drug user, drug dealer. Here I am now. It ain't no joke. Here I am. Here you are. What are we going to do with this? I don't know why we have that buzz and ringing, but can we fix it? He increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. He wants you to grow in stature. He wants you to set powerful people around you. That will speak into you. That you can learn from. That you can lean on. And if you can't have this powerful person because you think you should have the right to be around this powerful person, maybe not. There's always another powerful person. Find who God wants you to be around. I can't be around all of you and you all can't be around me all the time. And you wouldn't want to be. Because I'm goofy sometimes and people don't like goofiness and I'm silly sometimes and people don't like that. and I'm, I like having fun. I can be crazy. I can dance. I try to get Shelly to dance on the island. He wouldn't. Listen. We all can have the same thing that Jesus had. We can all grow in stature. We can all have favor with men and with God. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, Jesus says, keep my commandments. You can grow in God by keeping God's commandments. Do what he asks you to do. Obey him in the little things. So he can bless you in the big things. This is valuable information, guys. And you can grow fast, too. You know God can expedite your growth. This little baby that was born, he was cute. And this is not a half truth. This is the full truth. Not just because he's my grandson. He's a beautiful little boy. But from the first picture to the picture we just received, he's already changed. He's already changed. There's some people that say, I, I give God my life. And there's, you see no change. There has to be change. When you're born of him, when you're born in Christ, there has to be change. Things have to change. They can't not change. We can't stop this baby no more than we could have stopped Jesus from growing. Other than his life being snuffed out. We cannot stop it. He's going to grow, and he's just going to grow, and he's 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 going to get big. Lord willing. Be healthy, Lord willing. That's just the obvious. So if it's obvious, Jesus uses all these things to show us stuff. So if it's obvious in the humanity, we grow and grow and grow. And it should be obvious in the spiritual side as well. It all relates together that we grow and we grow, and we grow. <clears throat> He's so good. Some people think by when they have these social platforms and they have all these followers, <laughs> that that's, um, that's status. That's really not. So don't, don't use that as your gauge. <laughs> I've got a thousand followers. I think i got like three. I don't even know if I have that. I don't even know how to look for it. Or actually, Shelly, how many followers do I have? <laughs> do I, can I have followers on Facebook? Like, can I have I don't even know. Do you have a bunch of followers? I don't know. Randy, you got a bunch of followers on Facebook? <laughs> Steve has to have followers on Facebook. Do you have followers? I don't, I don't even know. Wow. Maybe we don't have followers. I, maybe not. 
but, but don't let your platforms you have, the social media platforms, don't gauge on where you are with Christ because of those platforms. Yeah. Jesus demonstrated different ways of influencing others. And listen, he, he, and who he allowed to influence him. That makes a difference, who you allow to influence you. Who you allow to speak into your life. Don't just let anybody speak into your life. And if someone gives you a word, don't just take that word verbatim. Take it to the Lord. Because they might be speaking a word to you just to get some status with you. We have to be careful with all these things. Some people want to speak a word to you and then you be like, oh man, that's great, that's a word. And you follow that word and it's totally out of the will of God. You have to be careful with all these things. We can all speak words over anybody at any given time. Be careful who you let influence you. Jesus was careful who he let influence him. He had favor with God. John Priestess in, in Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all, all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? For God was with him. And God is with you. He wants to be. Another way we know that Jesus grew, and that he was a man, he had his own will. Do you know that? Jesus had his own will. He could have messed everything up if he wanted to. Because when he prayed, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will. So Jesus, the man that we, that lives in us now, the one that died on the cross, rose from the grave had a will and he said Lord not my will but your will be done we should all have that kind of a mindset that kind of an attitude Lord not my will but your will be done Cody here on the front row I am so I'm, I'm like I'm just, Cody I'm just I want you to know publicly I'm just proud of you like like I'm stoked like proud of you Cody's going to do big things. His bride too. I'm telling you this right now. He's not been churched his whole life. He's not been in this his whole life. He, but he's, he's hungry. He's hungry. He's not been a Christian to where like you get so far and you think, I'm there, I got it, I'm, I'm good. I don't need any information from anybody. Well, that's a bunch of stuff. Because you do. You do need. I need. Even Steve Brown needs. 50 years pastoring, he still needs influence in his life. To grow him to a better man. Doesn't matter how long you've been in, but there's some that have been in like I'm good where I'm at. I don't need to go no further. I'm good because I, I know it all now. I got it all. I've collected. No, you have not. You will not until you actually stand face to face with him. And Cody, man, it made me cry this morning. <laughs> I went to his house the other day. I'm allergic, to, I'm allergic to smoke, and I couldn't go in his house because um, they smoke. He said I could share this. And <laughs> and getting to watch him grow is amazing. And he said that when I left, that they cried and they pondered over that. My pastor can't even come in my house. Because I smoke. He's allergic to smoke. And I smoke. So they've cut back. Almost a pack a day. I don't know how much did you guys smoke. <laughs> but I cut back almost a pack a day. Listen. Because he said this. 
I want my pastor to be able to come in my house. That is amazing to me. That is amazing to me that Cody would grow that much in a short time. People that's been Christians their whole life or say they've been Christians their whole life would never think like that. Would never have that kind of an attitude or even mindset. Is they're good. Deal with me the way I am. Cody, you're going to, I'm speaking this right now. You're going to do great things. Greater than me. I believe he's going to be preaching one of these days right here. I'm sorry. No, I'm not, but can't, I can't get over it just to know where he was. And I've, and, I've had, and I've had people that have been in church their whole life stick knives in me. It hurts. It hurts. You want what I have if you want Cody has if you want what Jesus has. You got to pay the price. You got to pray. Stay in the Word of God. Do what He tells you to do. Don't do what you want to do. Do what He tells you to do. And in that, you will become a solid Christian. I want you to know this morning. This whole thing, not my ministry, is my yes. That's all it is. So if you hear someone out there say, he thinks it's just his ministry, you just say, no, this is his yes. Can I see that shirt, Shelly? Underneath you. I just had these made up. I haven't even looked at them yet. Look at this. Oh, we might sell them if anybody wants them. This is not my ministry. Life of love is not my ministry. It's my yes. Imagine all of us having this kind of a yes. It's not. I, I want and I'm growing in to be a bond servant for Jesus. A bond servant. Not just a servant. A bond servant. There's a difference. Look it up. There's a difference. And I'm so, I'm so excited that I get to serve him. Did you feel him walk through the room earlier? Well, I can't say anything more other than Jesus said on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. So everyone that don't know what you're doing when you're wholeheartedly seeking him, just forgive them. Forgive them. Those ones that stab you in the back. Those ones that talk about you. Be loved to them. Be kind to them. That's all we got to do. Love people well. So are you growing this morning? Have you grown at all? From day one to now, have you grown? And if you are not growing much, why are you not growing much? Are you not eating the right food? Are you not, do you not have the right people around you? Do you not have the right influences around you? Are you letting people speak in your life that used to speak in your life? Tearing you down. No more. From today forward. Let's grow in Him. Let's walk in Him. Let our identity become from Him. I am who He says I am the world. I had more, but this is good. Can we stand? I 
I really want to thank you guys for letting Shelly and I get away. It was one of our most restful times that we've ever had in my life. We, we had to go to another island where we couldn't get off the island <laughs> to be able to rest. That's how my mind works. I had to literally go to an island and be on the island and there was nothing else to do but just be on an island and be with my bride. And it was the best time. I mean, we, we, I'm so relaxed right now, I could just like, I could just sit here all day long. Thank you guys for letting us go. Listen. This ain't over. We're still growing. We're going to continue to grow. We've got to get the daycare up and running to help fund this ministry. We still got a sign to pay for out there. None of you guys like worrying about bills, do you? I as a pastor don't either. I don't worry about it, but I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna think about it even. I wanna know that the funds are there to, to pay the bills and we're just I I wanna listen, I wanna be able to set everything on auto pay so I don't, so we don't have to think about it. It's just like it just pay, it comes out and it's paid for. But we stretch it so much that we have to kind of pay this to wait for this to pay this. I mean, we're still debt free. But we have to do that. I want to get past that. I want to get to the point where we can just put auto pay everything and know it's going to be paid and not have to worry about it. I believe that Jesus called us here for that reason, for the reason of ministering to a city. He said that he would pay for it, and I believe that he is. I'm asking that some of you step up just a little bit more, stretch yourselves a little bit further. You give 10, give 11. I don't know. Ask the Lord what he would have you do. There's some people here that give close to 50%. And the reason I know is because we've talked about it. No, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm not even asking for money right now. I'm just telling you. We're growing a ministry. You, if you've had children, you know it takes money to raise children. We're growing in ministry. We're growing in numbers. I'm going to scold you for one second. The little note things on the back, the little offering envelopes, they're not for doodling on. They cost money. Bring your notepad to doodle. Not on our offering envelopes. Thank you for that. See, we learned already. We're going to bring our notepads to doodle with. I don't know. She said they're like drawing characters. and I don't know. You might be drawing pictures of me. I don't know. Characters of me on the back of the... I love you guys so much. I love what God's doing here. I, I do. I mean, I, I can't. I can't get enough. Um, Kelly and I, this, you know, when we were gone, we just talked about you guys. How much we love you. How much we want. We really want. Like, we want to go to all your homes. I know we're not going to be able to, but we really want to go and be with all of you. And we might be able to manage that with this number, but it's just not always going to be that way. So that's why you guys need to find your powerful people. I'm, I'm no different than Randy. I'm no different. You know, Randy's just as powerful. Uve's just as powerful. Jimmy's just as powerful. You know, all of you guys are powerful. Find someone that, that you can hang with, that you can do stuff with, that you can just live life with. You don't have to be the pastor because the pastor is not the most powerful one in the house always. He's just the called one. Are you growing? If you're not growing, guys, listen. Let's come and let's pray and let's make a commitment today to grow. To feed on the word of God. Feed ourselves in prayer. To feed ourselves with influence. Feed yourself by giving. Do you know that when you give, that's your source of getting? When you give to the power company, you get power. You have to give 
to be able to get. It's simple. Watch the more you give, what you get. Huh. As Faye said, this is a learning moment for all of us. As Faye said, you can give with your time, your finances, your energy. During the spell out, so many of you come and gave of your time. And even if it was a few minutes, it didn't matter. You gave of your time. And I know that you reap from that giving. You will. This past week. Hey, did you have up on the screen? We're just going to stay here a minute. Did you have up on the screen like all the different ways that you can work with the church? I know last week that Faith come over and I believe she had to clean the house by herself. And if she wouldn't have been here, Miss Shelley would have been here and Miss Shelley would have been cleaning the house by herself, the whole house. We have to work on that. We have to work on that. You know, we, we can try to do it all, but then, then you're going to say they just want to do it all. So we try to pull back. You can't pull back if no one will step up. All these areas, all these things here. I mean, they said, man, it'd be cool to go out there in the parking lot and like get these vests and put them on and park these cars. He just did it. He went and bought his own vest. I was going to buy him. He went and bought his own vest, and he's out there parking cars. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with it. You have it. Thank you. Some of you guys do stuff like that. You just like, hey, I just I want to do this. You know. But there's things that we need. I mean, we need greeters. We used to meet. We used to a group of us used to meet in the back and pray. But I, but I, I just kind of dismantled that for a little bit. Um, because we need people out and greeting. We need ushers. We need ushers to help train and teach. You know, hey, when prayer's going on, go walk around and go through that door. Someone stand out there. Stand out there. Just because that's the way the house wants it. That's the way we feel like the Lord wants to keep the peace in the sanctuary. Clean. You know, a good way of cleaning, like, like Faye said, you know, don't leave your cuffs. If you do, we're going to send them to Africa. Yeah, we can send them all to Africa. They need cuffs. If you don't, <laughs> if you leave them, we're sending that box over. We will ship it out each week. Just pick yourself up around you. Straighten up the cards behind in the seat right there. Straighten them up. That way they're not all torn and flipped out. And just straighten them up. It's easy. That'll help everybody do it together. Cafe's going to be open soon. As soon as Jason gets working on it. Whoever else wants to come help and work on the cafe. We're going to need attendance for that. The media team, production team. Camera operators. We're not saying just because you're doing this, you're going to be stuck in this the rest of your life. You're not signed up for a lifetime commitment. Just sign up for a one-time commitment. One time to say, hey, I want to do this today. I want to clean the toilets tomorrow. I was cleaning toilets this morning. It's really easy, guys. We're a family. Let's operate as a family. Let's flow as a family. Honor one another, love one another, don't tear each other down, don't talk about one another. If you got something to say to me about me, come and tell me. I'm a big boy. Don't do it through your social media platform. You know, because I've seen that a lot, and I'm like, and I know it's for me. But I don't have to go chase it down, and I'm not going to chase it down. They'll get right. They'll get bold. They'll come and say, hey, pastor, 